Hey guys, what's up? So I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, disaster recovery for your Zabbix, which might be the question that comes up to you when you have some production environment with very sensitive monitoring system that you're relying on 24-7. But even if you're relying on something 24-7, you always should expect that something can go south. And the question is like what you exactly do when a Zabbix breaks and how exactly can it break and what are the possible ways to get back on track and continue the monitoring maybe by having some um, minimized uh, monitoring scope or something like that but still get your monitoring back on track and continue living while you resolve the issue that actually made your Zabbix to I don't know, crash or, or something like that. And to be honest, there are not so many ways what can really happen with your Zabbix. And also from knowing all of those cases, you will understand how you can remediate all of those problems and make sure that even if something goes wrong, you know what to do to get your monitoring back on track. And basically what's important here is, let me try to minimize this, you need to understand like what are the actual components of the Zabbix and what they are responsible for and how important they are in the whole your Zabbix server setup. So basically, when we talk about, um, let me do it like this. When we talk about Zabbix as monitoring tool, we refer like to the one system, and we expect that it is one syst one whole system that is responsible to monitor everything, right? But if we go like a little bit deeper, then actually our Zabbix monitoring tool exists, consists from three separate parts. And each of them has its own purpose. One is Zabbix frontend, which uh, means that it runs on, as example, Nginx. Uh, then we have Zabbix server, um, Zabbix servers, I don't know, let's call it service. And then we have a database. So these are the core components of the Zabbix, which means that we need to be ready for one of these to actually break and something happen. So let's think what can happen with the front end, with this one. And the reality is that with the front end, there's literally almost nothing that can happen. It is just a web engine, Nginx or Apache, depends on your configuration which runs Zabbix frontend files, which on the other hand is uh, connected to, let me make this, uh, okay, I hope you can see that, which on the other hand runs and connects to your database and pulls all the information out of there. But with the frontend itself, nothing can go wrong. And even if, I don't know, someone deleted accidentally some files in the user shares abex which is the directory where something happens you just reinstall the front end that's it yum installs abex uh, web mysql or postgres sql depending on which database engine you have and you're kind of good your system will continue to operate so what can happen with the zabbix server this is something that can happen and i'm not really talking here about uh, performance issues because performance issues are always uh, always can be there and even if you have some disaster recovery system set up then even if you do the dis disaster recovery most likely the performance issues will not disappear because those basically depends on configuration of your Zabbix server front end and database as such also including what kind of items item types you have uh, triggers trigger configurations and so on but basically what can happen with a Zabbix server suddenly you are hitting some sort of the bug and your Zabbix server is crashing. It is just restarting in the loop. If you open the log, which is in the var log, uh, Zabbix, Zabbix underscore server dot log, you see that the server is starting, then it is crashing and it's basically happening in the loop. Well, this can happen and uh, kind of good case if you have a high availability, but not necessarily it's going to resolve anything because Usually, if the crash will happen, it's going to affect some specific Zabbix version. As example, uh, it could be, I don't know, 7010. 7010 version has some bug which was identified, 
which absolutely matches your scope, your your environment setup and so on. And that is triggering Zabbix to crash. So the only thing that you can do in this case is depending if your system is up to date, whether or not 7.0.10 is the latest version. If it's not the latest version, then always upgrade your Zabbix server service. And we're talking about upgrading Zabbix binary and we're not talking about doing the major upgrade. So when you will be doing the minor version upgrade, let's say you have 7010, but actually the newest version right now is uh, 7012. You don't need to be worried about the upgrade process as such, because when we are upgrading minor version, the last digit of 7.0 branch, nothing is going to happen with the database. It's not going to start the upgrade process. There won't be any um big things happening so it's basically just upgrading the binary that is going to take you like a minute or two you restart your system and your monitoring is back on the track if you already are on the newest version well then i guess you already can imagine your only option is to uh, downgrade to previous version and hope that this will solve the problems if not try to find this bug which always is going to be uh, some ticket in the support.zabbix.com with the key uh, ZBX and some digits. And if you find a bug, then you can ask for assistance for uh, developers and maybe you can find like which version is affected and which not. And then you can see where you actually um, <clears throat> downgrade or upgrade. And the last component is the most important of all of them because in the database you have all of your Zabbix configuration, all of your hosts, all of your items, all of your triggers, all of your IP addresses, all of your passwords for configuration, everything that you can find in the Zabbix frontend basically is stored in a database, which makes this a super important thing, which means that you need to be very careful with your database. And believe it or not, but uh, with some in some cases, especially if treated incorrectly, databases may corrupt. The data in the database may corrupt and you may actually lose it. And just imagine what happens if suddenly you see that your Zabbix server is restarting, but not because it is crashing, but because it has failed to connect to the database. And you go check out your database server and you find that the MySQL is not starting because some table is corrupted and it's like important table that you cannot just drop. So basically you lose all of your uh, history data, not only history data, sorry, you lose all of your Zabbix environment and I'm talking about everything. So that's why it's super important to have backups. And I do understand that on a production, the database size of the Zabbix might be like terabytes or hundreds of gigabytes. And it's not so easy to make a frequent backups, but remember that in reality, when we're talking about the worst case scenario, when something goes south and uh, we need to get back on track, we're not so much worried about historical data, right? We are worried about a configuration, about monitoring everything and making sure that we continue to monitor everything from this point to the future. So what you can do is make a backup of all Zabbix database, excluding history, it's lowercase history underscore all of the tables that you will find and trends underscore underscore all of the tables that you will find. And if I still remember correctly, uh, there's going to be five tables for the history and two tables for the trends. These one will consume the most of your database size. Like if your database is 100 gigs, trust me, 99 of them is going to be with these tables. So if you exclude these and make backup only of configuration, then it's going to be a small backup. Then you can make those more frequently and always have it in case if something happens with your uh, database and you need to do disaster disaster recovery and restore to some point in the life. It is also possible to have a database replication as example, but that makes your setup a little bit more uh, complicated and a little bit harder to maintain. But in reality, 
uh, when you have, let's say, a database cluster with two database nodes where they are uh, replicated from each other, if something happens with the server one, let's say the, I don't know, the server got on fire and it just turned off and, and that said RAM is dead, as example, you will always have this replica of the database sitting there waiting when it will be started. Uh, to perform disaster recovery and your Zabbix server in that case will be pointed to this replica and continue to work, which will save you some time because if you don't have that, you will need to figure out, okay, which server can we use? Where do we have this backup? Copy, paste the backup, restore from the backup, and only then you are live, but still you lose some data. If you have a replication, then you basically start from the point when everything broke down on a master node right so that's kind of more beneficial and those are like the key things that i wanted to share in this video uh, let me know if you have any questions i'll gladly answer them in the comments so far thank you guys for watching and see you later in the next videos don't forget to subscribe goodbye